So the the um, start episode was so. Damn it! We haven't been in the car in a while. It's okay. Uh, all these years. You want me to take the heat off of you? Eh. Ready? Yeah. The Bills will not regress as much as people think they will Ooh. with Trey out of the line. Ooh. Ooh. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. You gave him that contract? You're going to say they're not going to regress? My wife asked me the other day, because during Trey's uh, intro to the Thursday night game, Jadavious White, LSU, DBU. <laughs> She's like, DBU? What does that mean? I was like, Defensive Back University. <laughs> She's like, uh, am I supposed to know what that means? I was like, LSU generates a lot of corners, but so does like Washington generates a lot of corners. Like there's some colleges that just generate a lot of corners. Still hold the candle for Washington. I still, I still do. I still do. Um, but I said, it's probably a dig at Levi because Levi went to Bama. <laughs> probably, like, it's probably a dig at Levi. That's so funny how they're, they're on opposite sides and they're always on opposite sides. Yep. Um, I felt so bad for Trey going down. He's from Louisiana. He went to LSU. Yeah. Like my heart just broke for him getting hurt in a stadium he's never played in and always dreamed of playing. Yeah. It broke my heart. So Trey's out of line. Now, I'm, I make that statement for this reason. Yeah. We could say that the Buffalo Bills defense has been undisciplined. Yeah. That's what, definitely a word you could use to describe that. You know, pen, with penalties and whatnot, the run defense has been in trouble. Um, with Levi out, I can't remember the exact comparison that I made before, but you're talking about... It's not like losing Darrell Revis on Rex Ryan's defense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where I you're, you're just going to man him up on the best receiver and then play 10 on 10 the rest of the game. Right. Lee, uh, Trey played within a zone scheme system where he would take the number one receiver out. And he played – he had an all-pro year this year. Yeah. Sure did. But was heavily relied upon in that regard. I think the Buffalo Bills – now out of necessity have to play better overall team defense without him yeah forcing the hand in like i said on the rapid fire episode that you know we had whether or not it's going to be before this or after this i don't know <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it suspenseful i know right you have frazier mcdermott yeah what better hands could you have trying to come up with secondary schemes losing an, an athlete and a player of the caliber of the draft. Yeah, I guess that's always sort of the the rub here, right? Is yeah. that um, you took Jordan Poirier and Mike Hyde from essentially the trash heap, right? Yeah. And through coaching, you were able to that different scouting department. Like let's just let's be real about that. It's a different scouting department. Yes. Different scouting department. Yes. But you were able to take those guys and turn them into again, might be biased here, the best safety tandem. Yes. In my let, let me just side note real quick. Do you think Hamlin and Johnson are built from the same mold as Hyde and Poirier? I don't know. We haven't really seen them. Enough. I mean, in the you know, I like Demar Hamlin a lot yeah. in pass coverage. Like I like Demar Hamlin an awful okay. lot. I liked him a lot when I watched Dave Jackson and Pitt. Like he jumps off the he jumps off the page. I'm just saying, McDermott could have had a lot of input. Absolutely, two guys are concerned. You Absolutely, I mean? right. But you, but you got Poirier from Cleveland. And you got a high from Green Bay. Green Bay. It's yeah. like okay, and you're not you're you're not really biased by saying that because name me another safety tandem in the league that's been together that long yeah. and has had that much success. Right. It's well, kind of hard to. Yeah, exactly. And you you look at Levi Wallace, who you know was again bargain basement shopping for corners. Uh, you have Trey, who's the fourth corner off the board, right? Yeah. Like, they've had no problem generating performance from the defensive back position. They, I mean, look at the guys that you've had at that DB2 position over oh, the years. Uh, Philip Gaines, EJ Gaines a few times. 
right? Monty Davis. Uh, for a little bit. <laughs> for a hot minute. Josh Norman. Like, they changing that position was never really an issue for them. They no. always would, would just go with whatever worked. But the lockdown was on the other side. It was, yes. You know? And now you're removing that. So the question becomes, what do you do there? Oh, Is it time to add somebody? Or do the Bills already have enough on their roster? Because they're carrying three defensive backs on their practice squad. So do they already have enough on their roster to deal with the loss? I think that in a zone scheme system, continuity and communication has to be paramount. So the guys that are already in the building, I think, give you a better shot than going, you know, shopping on the free agent market for sure. somebody. Okay. And that's just my personal opinion. If, if the Bills, let's just say, wanted to roll with Dane Jackson and Levi Wallace, uh, a seventh rounder and an undrafted free agent that's probably only here because Dave will saw him in practice every day. Came, came over with Robert Foster. Came over with Foster. Yep. You know, the same time Dave will Dave. You know, it's, it's not an accident. You know, you can probably connect those two. But the thing is, you have Hyde and Ployer back there. Now, does this mean that the aggressiveness out of Hyde and Ployer probably gets tamed a little bit? So, because they have to cover, right? Either either be over the top or this net, which puts pressure on your already limited linebacker court. Right. Let me ask you this, Paul, before you get to your point. Does this increase the snap counts of Ed Oliver? <clears throat> Greg Rousseau and those pass rushing phenoms up front. To. It has to. That's what I'm saying. Like, it has to. The rotation is going to be less up front because you need to generate that pressure to take the pressure off of your corner. Right. So you're saying you're going to see less epinescent. I Yeah. Or right. more. Who knows? You may have him in there more. He's not slow. No. But, I mean, Jerry, Jerry and Mario have been generating pressure. Mario has actually been generating pressure a lot the last they couple of years. No, can you, you gotta give play up a, man though. Yeah, can you give up a linebacker to do that? Right? Would you? Well, I mean, I'm yeah, talking I'm about putting Dane Jackson in man on man coverage, Teron Johnson in man on man coverage, put Hyde over Wallace and Blitz Point. Yeah, that that's all scary to me. You I, know, I, I, that's all I'm scary not saying as a, as a as a steady diet though, Paul. What I'm saying is they're gonna have to do more of Frazier's type defense and less of McDermott's type. Yeah, there's got to be a bit more sleight of hand, right? Like, you're going to have to get pretty creative uh, with when you dial those things up because the depth, you know, is a little concerning. Is Cam Lewis now going to play a lot more? I, when you have really physical teams, is, Sir, is, is Saran Neal going to play your CB2 against a really physical guy? Because Saran Neal could get burned, but he can play physical. Well, he can. If, if you need somebody to play physical, Saran Neal is probably your only guy on the roster that can play really physical call. Well, just to throw it out there for the chat for the nation. And just to let you guys know this. Because I know some people like the idea. Teron Johnson is your corner, CB2? Yeah, let's talk about that real okay. quick. Right. Let, so, I, I think, think, I think you and I are on different sides here. Well, I don't know if I'm on different sides, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that playing slot corner and playing outside are two different animals. Right. Yeah. It, <laughs> You know, there's a reason why certain guys don't do that. You know what I mean? He does come off the edge. He does create pressure. He does stick his nose in there and get dirty on the run, which I love. Right. But I, I equate it to this. Okay. If you take a slot corner and say, okay, listen, now we need to move you outside. The difference is like taking a running back and moving him to wide receiver and saying, you know what these routes should be. Now you just go do them instead. Right, you understand the concept, so you, you just go do that now. Right? He's got the skill set to play corner. He hasn't done it in three years. True. You know, like True. it's something I'm sure he's done. He obviously has done. I mean but you're not gonna get the same efficiency. He's not going to help you enough in order to move him outside, in my opinion. Yeah, and it begs the question, who then do you put in the slot? Do you put Jackson there, do you put Neil there? Like what do you do? Right. Lewis? Right. You know, he just gave him a lot of money to do what he's been doing. Yes. So I he's think the most moving him, to Yeah, I think moving him weakens your defense. I'm just I just wanted to throw it out there as like because that may be a suggestion. And may I mean because you do throw running backs out there every once in a while sure to catch do. passes. Sure do. And you know, uh, let me let me ask you this. 
Okay. You know, San Francisco's practice squad has a player on it that I love. Love as a nickel linebacker. Is love he over him. 30? Doesn't matter how old he is. Oh. oh. So if the idea is we're going to move Teron Johnson outside, you have time to do it right now, right? Because your game is Thursday, your next game's not until Monday. You got time to do it. What if you sign Tony Jefferson off San Francisco's practice squad? Do you remember Tony Jefferson? Talk to me. Tony Jefferson played middle linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. He was originally a cornerback. And then Bruce Arians is like, well, we're f- the middle linebacker, <laughs> so can you do it? And he was, I think he, I think he made the Pro Bowl, actually. <laughs> right? So that's a player that, in that nickel yeah. linebacker role, can play for you tomorrow. Played for Arians. He's just sitting on San Francisco practice squad. So... Just moving Tron Johnson outside and having to bring somebody in again because you're probably a little weak at the at the nickel linebacker role, right? If you had to bring somebody in, does that make your defense better than just going with the corners that you have in the roster? Or not? See, I don't know, like because I'm I'm really huge on communication and that defense is going to have to have everything dialed up. If you bring in somebody new, I I don't I don't think that you're not going to have any broken plays in that secondary. If you bring in somebody, you know what okay. I mean? I think the communication, like it could be fine. It really, it, really, it could go off without a hitch, but we're talking about, because no, no, we've covered a lot so far. We yeah. covered, okay, do you put Dane Jackson in? Do you sign somebody else? Do you move Teron out there? Does, we had in the rapid fire. Is Levi your number one corner now right. versus Dane Jackson yeah. or just leave more of that? I think volume is going to determine that. I think people are watching what's going to happen with, with those guys and how that manifests. Uh, do you put Hyde out there in limited roles? Because he did play corner at one point. Yep. Um, and then bring in Hamlin to play in the back end with Poyer. Sure, you can definitely could do you that. You can do that. I mean, you can rotate that in there, but that position, just as anything else, is, is, is about feel. It's about reading the wide receiver. And yep. So I, they have a bunch of options. And at this point in the season, at 7-4, and four, I'm executing all of those. There's not one defense that's going to be off the table because that's what Trey did for you. Yeah. You can put Trey out there and you can still play in base, punch people in the mouth, and do well. You can move Poyer around. You can move Hyde around. You can blitz Milano off the edge. You can blitz Tron Johnson off the edge. Now with with uh, Trey being out, you really have to do all of the little things perfect, penalty-free. So let me ask you, to get back on the trade of, well, maybe they should sign someone. Yes. Okay. So, what if I told you that you could sign that sounds like a 30 right 30. now? I know, right? <laughs> what, if I, um, what if I told you that? Oh, by the way, the thirty for thirty that we did last year. There was Ellie Eisler that did the voice, the thirty for thirty voiceover, yes. just to give Ellie a shout out. I yeah. very much appreciate that. So, what if I told you that you could sign one of these three players? We'll just go with three. Okay, I'm going to exclude Lafayette Pitts because I really feel like Lafayette Pitts is, a, is a, like a slam dunk. You could bring him back anytime. It makes right? too much sense. Right. So you have to sign one of these players. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Haha, uh-huh, Clinton Dix. It's not practice squad. You continue. Darquez Denard, practice squad. Here's, here's the slam dunk. You're such an asshole. Uh, Roby Coleman. He's out of practice squad, too. He's a slot. I'm just, I'm giving you three know, options here, right? So here's what we've done. I've given you a true slot corner. I've given you a, a, a safety, right? But a box safety to get to let Poyer stay back a little bit. And I've given you a very physical corner. I've given you three options, all on practice squads, all you can sign okay. right now. Okay. What You have to sign one of them. Which one are you doing? I'm pretty sure Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Which practice squad is he in? Uh, Las Vegas? Might be Las Vegas. Well, here's the deal. Haha Clinton Dix got taken out of the Dallas secondary, which gives up 700 yards <clears throat> passing a game. All right, so I don't know how valuable he'd be. Even Vegas. though I loved him. It is Vegas. Even though I loved him. Darquez Denard is on the Detroit Lions practice squad. Sure is. He can't make that line up? How'd you know that? Because I was looking at the <laughs> <laughs> I love Darquez Denard when he came out, man. I did too. He's Super a big physical. physical core, yeah. Super physical, right? Uh, but you're going to play. He can only play man. Right he can yeah. only play man. That's all he can do. But if you're going to have to bring more pressure, 
Yeah. It's not you're going to be playing man on the backside of that anyway. Yeah. Uh, if if you just tell him just play man on the you know, you can bring somebody in now and say yeah. just play man and they could they can play for you. Oh my god, god. Or Mikel Roby Coleman who does play slot. It does make sense to to bring him in if you wanted to play dime, but then you're taking Milano or Edmonds. Right. So yeah. if you wanted to play dime and you wanted. Because, unfortunately, teams are going to look at that now with the Trey, Trey White injury and be like, hey, we're going four wide, no tight ends. That's that's the beat. That's here. what you said. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said to you on the phone is, listen, the beat is you just go four wide. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take your matchup. Right. And how simple is that for a young quarterback? Oh, exactly. Mac Jones yeah. is going to run four wide. Yep. And then the Bills going to have to generate pressure. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be like, I'm going to pick the best matchup here. Yep, because you know that's what McDaniel's and Belichick are going to do. That's exactly right. Uh, it's and then that will then lead into other teams mimicking that. Unfortunately, so right. the Bills are going to have to try to fix this, and they got ten days to do it. Oh, those are three. Those are the, you know, I, three four years ago, those are huge names. Right, such huge names. Right. Quentin Art's big too. Isn't he like six two? I love Doug Quentin Art. Like that's just. I love how he plays the game. He gets burned so much, but if you're going to have to bring pressure, I mean, what's the difference? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? So, are they going to are they going to transform from a bend but don't break to a risk no risk it no biscuit defense? I look at it this way, right? The splits tell you that turnovers win them football games. True. You know? That's that's the name of the game. But and that's a very different thing from Frazier McDermott. Yes. Like they really philosophically see that different. Wait, wait, hold on. I feel like this is another episode. Frazier versus Frazier McDermott. versus McDermott, and their philosophical differences. That, this ties into the draft class. Like this, this feels like a different episode. He did this me. one. This wasn't my fault. This wasn't my fault. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs>